Welcome my fellow truth seekers, I'm Keisha, your guide to the untold stories. Today we delve into the life of Ben Affleck, a man whose journey has been a roller coaster of triumphs and tribulations. Join me as I uncover the truth behind the headlines and explore the real Ben Affleck. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Benjamin Gaza Affleck Bolt was born in Berkeley, California on August 15, 1972 to Affleck and his mother. His family uprooted when he was three years old and settled into Cambridge, Massachusetts. They lived in Falmouth when his brother, Cassie, was born. Christopher Ann Chris Bolt was an elementary school teacher whose mother had earned a Harvard degree. The father of the actor and director was a dramatist named Timothy Byers Affleck, who was mostly unemployed. On occasion, he would fill in as a janitor at Harvard, as well as a bookie, electrician, bartender, and carpenter. He had worked with the theater company of Boston as a stage manager and an actor in the mid-1960s. Affleck recalls his father drinking all day every day while he was growing up because of his severe chronic problem with alcoholism, as Affleck put it. When Affleck's parents divorced and his father left the family home, he felt relief because his father had been very difficult to deal with. Affleck was 11 years old at the time. After two years of heavy drinking, his father checked into a treatment center in Indio, California when Affleck was 16 years old. For 12 years, he was a resident and addiction counselor at the facility where he stayed sober. Oh, yes. Affleck grew up a liberal in politically engaged family. But he and his brother Cassie were, well, they grew up in an artistic household. Their mother took them to the theater on a regular basis and always pushed them to film their own home movies. Affleck was very bright and intensely curious boy, according to the family friend, David Wheeler, who we call the incident in retrospect because their mother was friends with the casting director in the Cambridge area. The Affleck brothers auditioned for parts in commercials and films, and Affleck began his professional acting career when he was seven years old, believing acting to be unstable and frivolous, uh, you know, a frivolous occupation. His mother put his salary into a college savings account and wished for a career in education for her son. At the tender age of 13, Affleck shot an episode of a Mexican children's TV show. During a year of traveling around the nation with his brother and mother, he picked up the Spanish language. Oh, yes. Speca, Affleck's drama instructor at Cambridge Ringe and Latin High School, was a major influence on the actor. He and a fellow classmate, Matt Damon, whom he known since he was eight years old, were fast friends. The two had identical interests. Although Damon was two years older, yet they both aspired to be actors. They pulled their resources in a shared bank account and took the train and plane to New York for acting auditions. Despite his outstanding SAT scores, Affleck was a chronically absent and uninterested student. Because of his, well, because of its closeness to his girlfriend, he decided to spend a few months studying Spanish at the University of Vermont. However, he had to leave after breaking his hip playing basketball. Yeah, he can play basketball. Affleck relocated to Los Angeles at the age of 18 years old and spent the next year and a half at Occidental College, majoring in Middle Eastern Affairs. Oh, yes. Ben's mom wanted to send him to Hollywood or to a family that would pay them to give him a chance. The dark end of the street. 
1981, an independent movie made by a family friend was his first movie. He was seven years old at the time. As a child actor, he did his best. I mean, in the PBS science education shows, The Voyage of the Mimi in 1984 and The Second Voyage in 1988, the actor sporadically worked on Mimi from the age of 18 to 15 in Massachusetts and Mexico. As a kid, he was in some movies and TV shows like Wanted, A Perfect Man in 1986, Hands of a Stranger in 1987, and a Burger King ad from 1989. Now, in order to find work as an actor, Affleck went to New York, because that was a place at the time before California became the place, for a short time after high school. After that, Affleck directed student pictures at Los Angeles Occidental College. He played a lot of knockaround parts, one after the other, whatever you can get. In Daddy, 1991, he played Patrick Duffy's son in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer. In 1992, he played an unnamed basketball player. Remember I told you he used to play basketball? And in School Ties, 1992, he played a prep school student. Mm -hmm. In the movies Against the Grain in 1993, he played in that as well. And Body to Die For, the Aaron Henry story, he played in that in 1994. He played a high school quarterback who used steroids. Yeah, Affleck was best known at this point for his role as a mean high school student in Richard Linkletter's 1993 movie, Days and Confused. As Linkletter looked for a likable bad boy, Affleck stood out as a huge and imposing and so clever and full of life. The director noted, I immediately liked him. Later, Affleck said that Linkletter helped him learn how to make movies. In Glory Days, 1995, Affleck's first lead role was an idol art student. Stephen Holden of the New York Times said that Affleck's affably, mopey, performance hit just the right mix of annoying and sad sack. I guess that was a compliment. After playing a mean kid in Kevin Smith's 1995 movie Mallrats, he got to know Smith. Even though Affleck was afraid of throwing people into their lockers, he didn't really like playing bullies. He really didn't. Smith gave him a big part in the love comedy Chasing Amy. You know, something different in 1997. This movie was Affleck's big break from being a bully. Janet Maslin of the New York Times said that Affleck played the part with amazing ease. I mean, it was natural and suave, good looks with cool comic timing. Moving right along here. Anyway, in 1997, Ben Affleck's performance in Good Will Hunting, which he co-wrote, by the way, and acted in, made or broke his career, and so on and so forth with his many career endeavors. Now let's get personal. Ben Affleck's personal life was always something on the news and of a mystery. With that said, let's go back in time. During Affleck's long career, he was first publicly linked to Cheyenne Rothman, whom he met at the age of 18 years old while filming the Justice League movie. She was in high school still. They dated from 1990 to 1997. It was rumored they broke up because Affleck was cheating on her with many women, one of them being Gwyneth Prothro. Oh, yes. Whom he dated off and on from 1997 to 2000. They starred in the movie Bounce and Shakespeare's in love together just in case you didn't pick this up affleck has a habit of dating his co-stars oh yes anyway they broke up because affleck again kept cheating one of the women he was known to cheat with was britney spears it was told that back in 1999 after his breakup with Gwyneth prothrow Ben went on hiatus for a couple of years, or three at the most. He was linked to many stars and normal females. Affleck was a hoe, just to blatantly say it. Being with one woman is something he cannot handle. No, he couldn't handle it. Hence why he doesn't like the paparazzi. Yeah, but I get into that a little later. Now, after some years passed, movies dropped 
and the scandals arose. Affleck was accused of groping MTV host Hillary Burton during a 2003 appearance on Total Request Live. He issued an, an apology on October 11, 2017, tweeting, I acted inappropriately toward Ms. Burton and I sincerely apologize. His apology came a day after he condemned Weinstein's behavior toward women. Mm -hmm. Get into that later too. Now, Burton didn't accept his apology. You all have to understand that Affleck and Matt Damon were close to Harvey Weinstein. It was told they knew he was a creep. They also knew the women whom Weinstein used to try to force himself on. It was told that Affleck and Matt Damon both partook in some of these disgusting atrocities with Weinstein. Oh yes, allegedly. Now, Affleck has a pattern whenever he commits a stream of darkness and memories of those dark actions start to haunt him. He always subjects himself to consumption of alcohol to silence the voices and the sick memories of what he's done. Affleck entered rehab in 2001, a couple of years before the allegations of Burton were released. Then he entered rehab again in 2017, shortly before the spree allegations against Harvey Weinstein went viral. It was told that Ben feared his longtime friend Weinstein would write him out. It was told he's still worried about that. Now back to Ben's dating history. It was 2002. Yes, during his dark moments when he started dating Jennifer Lopez. While filming Gilly. Yes, another romance from a co-star. Mm-hmm. Yep. A year later, 2003, they were meant to get married in Santa Barbara, but they broke it off in 2004 due to media attention and the bombing of the movie, Julie. Kind of like Deja Vu, the bombing of her documentary video album, and they have breakout rumors. This is starting to become a trend. Anyway, moving right along here. However, Ben was rumored to be dealing with some darkness and secretly messing around with Jennifer Garner, who he met on the set of Daredevil in 2003. They got married in 2005, and it was rumored that he only married Garner because she was pregnant. This force to marry Garner thing carried throughout their marriage because of reports of Affleck's gambling and alleged liaisons with other women that the pair had drifted apart and had been in professional therapy for years. He was not really feeling her. It's more like an obligation. The split was announced a day after the 10th wedding anniversary. They finalized their divorce in 2018, but remained on good terms. Now, after and during this toxic marriage, Affleck was linked to many women. Affleck doesn't like to be married, if you haven't noticed. And I'm still wondering why Jennifer Lopez wanted to marry him. I may have confirmed this, though, during a live show. Take a look at this. This video album that Jennifer Lopez is talking about is very good and is very artistic, okay? She did learn her lesson, though. She didn't learn her lesson and never listened to what the Zodiac gods and goddesses said. She convinced herself that what she wanted wasn't bad, but her drive to never give up. So... Even though she had this video album, she was explaining, like, I'm trying to chase for love, going back to her childhood and her childhood dream to have the perfect marriage, yada, da, 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 to be accepted, to be loved, to have that love security. This has to be deeply rooted in her childhood where she must have felt not loved as a kid. I'm sensing that she had a, I don't know, deep disconnection with some father. Maybe she didn't feel the love from her father that she wanted. So she always searching for that love and doing whatever she can to try to get it. And apparently she may have seen some of those characteristics and um, uh, Ben Affleck apparently among other gifts and um, blessings that Ben Affleck has. So I can understand why she's trying to give with him. You know what I mean ladies? Yes, uh-huh, he's hanging low. He's very blessed. Okay, anyway, so there could be other deeply childhood rooted reasons why Jennifer Lopez is feeling to need to always be in love and never be alone is means she's afraid to be alone with her thoughts and she has to be married. It's no longer, I'm starting, it's, ne it's not love, it's an obsession. And anything that it's an obsession is not love. Obsession is not love. The rooted of any obsession is something deeply psychological and mentally and emotional wrong with the person. If someone is obsessed, obsessed with you, they do not love you. Obsession, again, people, is not love. She's obsessed with being in love. She liked the idea of being in love. In this whole movie, album, whatever, 
she goes through, she's in a heart factory, make sure her heart is working right. You know, everybody in the factory, make sure it works. But it started plumbing and going crazy, whatever. And then you go through different segments of her life and different segments of her marriage where she married this person, then work out. She married this person, then work out. Da, 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 da. And she said her goal was Ben Affleck. Okay. Ben Affleck is the only Caucasian guy that she got with. The Caucasian guy, no offense to my Caucasian people. I love you, but I'm speaking facts in the video. Okay. Caucasian guy that she get with, okay, who owns a former plantation, who was going to sell his plantation, but decided to keep it and marry Jennifer Lopez on this same plantation. The only person who broke off the engagement with her, the only person who broke off the engagement with her, not she breaking it off, she, he broke it off. So this was a failure that she refused to let go. I got rejected by a white man. I got rejected. No, I'm going to prove to people that I not only can marry a white man, but I can stay in love with him and be in love with him forever and ever and ever because it's my goal to be accepted by the white community. This is a goal. This is an achievement. She may be in love, but it's deeply rooted somewhere else. Let's be realistic here. This almost brings us to the present in 2021 jennifer lopez and ben affleck made their love instagram official by posting a pda filled photo of the pair in honor of her 52nd birthday oh yes they later made their red carpet debut at the venice film festival that september it was told that this was to derail jennifer's scandal with a rock among other reasons other family reasons Hence the shotgun wedding in Las Vegas in July 2022. Ben needed to clean his drunken cheating image as well. And so did Jennifer. They both had they both had agendas for this marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Jennifer, who also had a past failure to fix, remember, among other reasons, even though who broke it off is still going back and forth. Most sources say Ben broke it off. And that's why she was so heartbroken. And then uh, Jennifer Lopez sources said that she broke it off. But we're just going to say, I'll just say whatever name comes up during the um, course of this video. Moving right along here. Now, also before the legal drama involving Jennifer's ex sicko Sean Combs escalates, Ben wants to dump Jennifer because the 1999 club shooting ensures that she will be summoned to testify as a witness at some point. There's no telling what other skeletons may start to fall in both of their closets. The case with Weinstein has surfaced again, so Affleck is again terrified that his dirty little secret may be revealed. Hence why he desperately tries to stay out of the paparazzi, among other reasons. He doesn't want someone to recognize him, you know, like the uh, prostitutes and other people that may know his dirt. He don't want to be photographed by the paparazzi, you know, whatever. Anyway, I mean, I feel like may have done some good things, but he's done a lot of bad things. It was told that Matt Damon and he used to scare some of Harvey Weinstein's victims into not coming forward with allegations against Weinstein. It was also said that they used to allegedly partake in some drug orgies with Weinstein and women and all warrants of age back in the day. I'm talking about teenagers, not five and six years old, like teenagers. This is what... Is haunting Ben. However, Ben has big time directors and networks in his pocket. They're protecting him just like they did for Johnny Depp. But as soon as Affleck becomes a liability, he's thrown to the fish. Okay. People of Latino or Negro slash black descent are something that these racist elites really dislike. Yeah. Now, I e Jennifer Lopez, whom I think sometimes forget that she is of Latino race. I know she represents, but I think sometimes she forget. The fact that Affleck wed Jennifer on a plantation and over a bridge, the very spot where they used to hang Negro slash blacks, was problematic. But it revealed his hidden support to the elite. This is also another reason why he's trying to distance himself from Jennifer. Well, I'm not done yet. It gets deep. One of the reasons why Ben and Jennifer Lopez broke up back in 2004 was because Ben's mom, yeah, Ben Affleck's mom, 
is very racist and that was is very racist and she didn't like their union she would have been to dump jennifer lopez that latino hussy she used to call jennifer lopez and told him to marry someone of his race so who did he marry he married racist jennifer gardner who his mother loves and who is very racist and merely tolerates negro slash black people Take a look at this. So after these past few days, it's a bite under the pressure that these two Jennifers are just called the M&Ms now, like either misinformed or microaggression, like what is going on? Um, let's talk about our families maybe first, where we came from, where our parents came from. Why don't you start, Regina? I grew up here in LA, born and bred, one of the few people that are born and bred in LA. So that's, a, I think, a very cool thing and I kind of wear it on my chest very proudly because so many people say, oh, LA is this and LA is that. And I'm like, well, no, you're not from LA, so you don't really know it. But do you know where your ancestors are? Uh, but do you know where your ancestors are? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> we're part of the triangle slave trade. and. Um, from Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Senegal. But my parents are both from the South, met each other here. To this day, I'm totally grateful my mom left. My mom was the one that was like, I am fucking out of this bitch, and I'm going to see what else is out there, and she came to LA. And to like, I see why they're calling her a microaggression Maggie, and that look? is screaming like I was born in Houston and raised in West Virginia. Like, Jen, what the f- Into the living room and my husband Scott is sitting there and he was like, <gasps> and my lip was like, like Colin said I look like one of those um, African women with a plate in their lip. Hey, <laughs> seriously, like, mm -hmm. seriously. seriously. <laughs> That's crazy. People saying Lizzo seeing everyone move on from dragging her to dragging Jennifer Garner. <laughs> like, <laughs> To further prove this, in 2015, Affleck appeared on the PBS show Finding Your Roots, where host Henry Louis Gates Jr. discovered that one of Affleck's ancestors had been a slave owner. He came under heavy fire after a leaked email exchange showed that Affleck had asked his team behind the PBS show not to include a part of the episode where the information about Affleck's slave owner ancestor is revealed. In the corresponding emails, Gates asked Michael Linton, the head of Sony Pictures, how to handle a request from an unnamed celebrity who wanted to have a slave owner in his family's history removed from the program. The ancestor, Benjamin Cole, had been a relative on Affleck's mother's side, are we surprised, and had owned slaves in Chatham County near the plantation-style home Affleck purchased in 2003. Was it a quinkadink or an honor? Yes, the very same one he married Jennifer Lopez said, a deeply prejudiced history runs in Ben's family. However, please note that was the major reason Ben and Jen had to elope to Las Vegas before the wedding. No objections. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post my videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.